Hello, we are beginning our unit on trigonometric identities. Identities are true statements about trigonometric relationships. Um, I would like you to have out or print, I attached an identity handout. And this is something that you probably will want a hard copy of to um, use as a reference. Again, you don't have to, but I would suggest that. If you take a look at those identities, um, I compare them, and I know you'll love this comparison, to all the different reasons you used in geometry proofs. You had to use those reasons, theorems, postulates, definitions, when doing proofs. Okay, these identities are statements that will be used um, in simplifying trig ratios, in solving trig equations, etc. Now, if you look at this handout or the attachment on the trig identities, if you look at that page, you think, wow, that is a lot. Okay, I will expect you to know these, but here's the deal. We're not doing these all at one time. Um, the more you practice these, the more you will get to know them. Okay, so actually you already know some of these. Um, they are by, grouped by categories. You don't need to know the categories, just in case I use the vocabulary, maybe in that way. All right, reciprocal identities. We already know the relationship that sine of theta is one over cosecant, they're, relate, they're reciprocals, so cosecant is one over sine. Cosine is one over sine of theta, so secant is one over cosine, and tangent of theta is one over cotangent, cotangent is one over tangent. See, you already know those. Okay. Quotient identities, you already know these. The tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta, and the cotangent of theta is cosine theta over sine theta. Now, they, uh, these are on the note handout, but not on your identity sheet. So when you've printed out your identity sheet, if you choose to do that or have access, I would encourage you to add these to them. Okay, odd and even functions. They are used, not used that often, but this is a way to also connect. We always classified graphs by odd and even on one of the reasons we did that. Okay, so just a rema reminder on odd and even functions. All right, our odd functions are symmetric to the origin. Well, if we go back to our trig graphs, sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent are all of our odd functions. Our even functions are symmetric to the line, the y-axis. Okay. So all of the odd functions have this relationship. The sine of negative x equals the opposite of sine of x, whether it's x, theta, a, b, whatever we want to call our angles. The cosecant of negative x equals opposite the cosecant of x. The tangent of negative x equals negative tangent of x, and the cotangent of negative x equals negative cotangent of x. Now, if I didn't prove these to you, but another way to show this or verify this is to put in some angles. So if I said the sine of negative 90, well, negative 90 is 270, sine of 270 is negative 1. Yep, that's true. It's supposed to equal the opposite of the sine of 90. Well, the sine of 90 is 1, and we get a true statement. Okay? So I could put in here, I, I don't have room to write, but if I said the tangent of negative 45. Well, negative 45, that's the tangent of 315, and that is equal to negative one. If I, and that's supposed to equal negative the tangent of 45. Well, the tangent of 45 is one, and the opposite, that's negative one. Okay, what's the relationship of your even functions? Okay, your even functions if I have the cosine of a negative angle, it's just equal to the cosine of that angle. And that applies for secant as well. So again, I just put in an angle here, cosine of negative 180. That's cosine of negative pi. That's equal to negative 1. That's supposed to equal the cosine of 180, which equals negative 1. Okay, now, um, Pythagorean identities. Very, very, very important identities, much like the quotient and reciprocal identities. Um, these will come up often. Now, Pythagorean identities are based on the Pythagorean theorem. That's why they're called that. Okay, so if you go back to your notes, I have a unit circle. I put in a right triangle, horizontal sides X, vertical sides Y, 
um, hypotenuses are. So true statement, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, this is an equation. I can do anything I want to it. So I'm going to divide all sides by r squared. What I am doing right now is I'm doing a proof to you of how we derive the parent of the trig of the Pythagorean identities. So I'm proving this to you so that you understand it and you could always go back and figure it out if you've forgotten it. Okay, so I've got this statement. Would this be true? Could I say x over r is the same as x squared over, x over r squared is the same as x squared over r squared? Sure, same thing here. Y over r quantity squared is the same thing as y squared over r squared. All right, now here is the big connection. Go back to this. Is x over r the same thing as cosine of theta? Yes, it is. Is y over r the same thing as sine of theta? Yes, it is. So for x over r, I'm going to substitute in cosine of theta. And for y over r, I'm going to substitute in sine of theta. So we have just proven the first and the parent of the Pythagorean identities. So this is a true statement. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Now, whether you write cosine squared out here or you write it like I have on the identity sheet. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. I want to give you an example here. If I said, um, I'm going to switch around here, let's put in 60 degrees. So if I said the cosine of 60 degrees squared plus the sine of 60 degrees squared equals 1. All right, cosine of 60 degrees, that's 1 half. And if we square that, sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Square that. What's 1 half squared? 1 fourth. What's square root of 3 over 2 squared? That would be 3 fourths. 1 fourth plus 3 fourths is 1. So again, I can't tell you enough to understand when you get an identity. Put in some numbers. Put in some angles. And that will verify why it's true. Okay, so as I just mentioned, that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. That is the parent of the Pythagorean identities. So the other two are derived from that. All right, so cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Okay, so divide, I can do anything I want to this. So if I divide all sides by cosine, all parts by cosine squared, I get 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Okay, I also want to make a note. We know that sine over cosine is tangent, so therefore sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. So I just simplify this. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. This is a reciprocal, so 1 over cosine is secant, so 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. And there is our second Pythagorean identity. Okay, the third one, again, comes from cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Now, this time, I'm going to divide everything by sine squared. So, just like we know cosine over sine is cotangent, cosine squared plus sine squared is cotangent squared. Plus 1 equals cosecant squared. We know 1 over sine is cosecant, so 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. These three are your Pythagorean identities. You're going to see I'm just explaining these now on how we use these. You will continue. There are lots of ways these are going to be used. Now, as I just mentioned, these are used often, so we also need to recognize the different versions. So, for example, if I know cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, I also know if just rearranging these, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared, and sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. You may want to add that to the identity sheet if you have printed it. Same thing, 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Tangent squared is secant squared minus 1, or um, 1 equals secant squared minus tangent squared. We've got to know, recognize the different versions of these, okay? We also know that cotangent squared plus 1 is cosecant squared, or I could subtract terms. 1 equals cosecant squared minus cotangent squared, or cotangent squared equals cosecant squared minus 1. Now, Let's get an idea of how we're going to use these, okay? Identities are used in solving equations. And then let's think about what are the different tools you used eighth grade year and freshman year just for learning to solve basic equations? 
you learned how to factor, you learn how to simplify algebraic expressions by factoring, by getting common denominators, okay? This is leading us to solving equations. Um, in the spring and next year when you take calculus, there will be um, what are called integrals and derivatives with these in them. So there's a lot of way these are used. So what we are going to do today in these four examples we're going to do, it's just about starting to recognize the identities. We are going to simplify trig expressions. So think about back to freshman year, eighth grade year, you were given algebraic expressions and you were asked to simplify them. Okay, that meant reducing them as far as they could go. Okay, so what are some hints just to get us started? Okay, so if I give you a trig expression and I ask you to simplify it, all right, what are you gonna do? Well, big thing we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute using our identities. We're also gonna go back to factoring. We're gonna get common denominators. Okay, so you're gonna see what I meant, you're gonna understand more what I meant in the beginning that doing this homework and practicing these, you're gonna see they're all different types of problems. It's not the same problem, just written with different trig functions. And at first, I know this first day, you're gonna like, oh, I don't know if I recognize all this. The more you practice, the more you'll learn techniques on how to simplify these. Okay, and think about what where this is going. All right, eventually what we will do is I will give you an equation and ask you to solve this equation. Well, to solve this equation, we gotta know how to simplify this first. Okay, so taking a look here, my first example, I've got cosine x minus cosine cubed of x. Now, if we were in class, I would you know, let you take a look at that, talk with a partner and say, okay, is there anything you see? All right, well, the one thing I do see a common factor, I'm gonna factor out a cosine of x. All right, if I factor out a cosine of x, that leaves me with one minus cosine squared of x. Okay, so you don't have to write these reasons. I was just doing this to explain to you what I did from here to here. I factored it. Now, we have to ask, am I finished? Is there more I can do? All right, well, does anybody recognize one minus cosine squared? you have your identities out, isn't that a version of the Pythagorean identity? Isn't one minus cosine squared um, sine squared? Remember, our identity, cosine squared plus sine squared is one. Isn't one minus cosine squared one of those versions? So I know that one minus cosine squared is sine squared because I substituted in that identity. Now the hard part with just the simplifying is not knowing for sure when you're finished. Okay, when you're finished is when you've got rid of fractions if you can, when you've got a common denominator, when you can't substitute anymore. Okay, let's try the next one. Simplify sine of x times cosecant of negative x. Well, first of all, this cosecant of negative x should jump out at you. We don't typically have a negative angle in there. Isn't that one of our odd identities? Okay, isn't cosecant of negative x the same thing as negative cosine, cosecant of x? All right, so all I did was I substituted this identity. Now, I can use the identities once they've been proven. It's like in geometry. Once you proved a theorem or used a postulate or definition, you could use them in your proofs. Okay, so now this is saying sine of x times the negative cosecant of x. Isn't that like a negative one? So I'm just gonna bring this negative out front. So this is like negative one times sine of x times cosecant of x. Now, are, do you recognize these are reciprocals of each other? So I, re -re I rewrote cosecant of x as one over sine. The signs reduce and you get negative one. Okay, just like in geometry when you were doing proofs, okay, you have to show the steps. Okay, we can't just assume, oh, I knew that because I substituted in and I just wrote it out. Just like I showed these steps, all right, we've got to show each step. You don't have to write out these reasons, but basically when I ask you to simplify, simplify is like, in a way, like a geometry proof. Okay, let's go to C. 
So I have secant squared plus cosec squared minus tangent squared plus cotangent squared. Okay, just like in geometry with proofs, um, you may do this differently from me. You may do this differently from a classmate. So there are going to be different ways to do these. Okay, so for some, some people went ahead. I know in the past, if I've done a problem like this, they said, okay, let's distribute our negative one and rearrange things. That could work. What I went ahead and did was I used my identities um, so because so I could get like terms and get some terms to drop out. So do you see secant squared? Use your identity sheet. Isn't secant squared the same thing as tangent squared plus one? So I substituted using an identity. Now, I didn't touch this one because what I decided to do was I had a tangent squared here, okay? And so I'm gonna try to get those to drop out. All right, now I've got a tangent squared here, but I also have a cosecant squared. So I am gonna substitute in for cotangent squared, cosecant squared minus one, okay? Now, I did that, and now I'm gonna distribute my negative one, all right? So distributing my negative one to here, my tangent squared minus tangent squared drops out, my cosecant squared minus cosecant squared drops out, and I end up with one plus one is two. And that's definitely as far as I can take it. So if you're sitting there thinking, how did she know to do that? You might have thought of a different way. Okay, um, so you might have done some substitution and got other terms to drop out. Okay, last one. <clears throat> So I have one over one minus sine of x plus one over one plus sine of x. Again, all of these have a different approach. And just like when you did proofs in geometry, sometimes do you remember starting on a proof and it didn't work out the way you planned? Okay, that can happen. All right, so how do I begin this? Well, my first instinct is I've got two fractions. If I've got fractions and I'm adding them, I need to get a common denominator. So that is what I'm going to do here. My common denominator is going to be 1 minus sine of x times 1 plus sine of x. A mistake I'll see people make is they'll try to clear the fraction. This is not an equation. There are not two sides to this, okay? You can't clear the fraction. Okay, so I'm getting a common denominator, so I'm multiplying this first fraction by 1 plus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. I'm multiplying the second fraction by 1 minus sine of x over 1 minus sine of x. Okay, now that I have a common denominator, I'm going to add my fractions. And so I add my numerators and I have one plus sine of x plus one minus sine of x. My signs drop out and I have two over one minus sine of x times one plus sine of x. Okay, that denominator, at least we got one fraction, which is good, but that denominator does not seem simplified. So I'm going to multiply those out and I get two over one minus sine squared. All right, hopefully you've already got through this lesson thinking, okay, squared, squared. When I see square terms, I should think of Pythagorean identities. All right, isn't one minus sine squared a version of one of the Pythagorean identities? 1 minus sine squared is the same thing as cosine squared. Now, some people could argue 2 over cosine squared is simplified. However, I think if you cannot have a fraction, that makes it more simplified. Isn't cosine squared the reciprocal of secant squared? And so we have 2 secant squared of x as far as we can go. All right, so again, I'm going to encourage you, if you have access, to print out your trig identities. That identity sheet, I'm going to encourage you to add the odd and even identities to that sheet and add the different versions of the Pythagorean identities. All right, as you are working with these, show your steps. Again, um, you can tell that when we did these problems, these four examples, all of them had a different approach. So try factoring, try common denominators, try using your identities.